in Zambia. Good evening, Africa, and warm welcome to this special edition of the Finals. Today is the 12th of December, the year 2020. My name is uh, Innocent Peter, and of course, you can simply call me IP. We are broadcasting to you live from Zambia's capital city, Lusaka. And also remember the program is, uh, all, is also live on our official Facebook, uh, Facebook page, which is Ask a Movie, as well as Topstar Decoder Channel 104. Now we've remained with exactly three weeks before the end of the year 2020 comes to a close, a year that has been described as the difficult year to most Zambians, more especially the ordinary citizens in terms of the economy. The year 2020 citizens have been subject to what is called the new normal because of the COVID-19. And of course, this is a plague that has clipped, that had crippled a number of uh, the sector of the economy, such as education. We can talk about the tourism sector, as well as uh, health, and among other areas of um, the economy. Not only that, we have to make mention here that uh, political as well, the country had a number of activities such as the by-election that were held in the year 2020. And of course, the issues to deal with the constitutional amendment process, Bill Number 10, that had divided a lot of Zambians. Our review of the year now begins here as movie television. And our first guest to begin with on my program is uh, NAREP leader or NAREP president, Stephen Nirenda. Now, Matt mentioned to you that uh, NARA uh, leader uh, decided to join politics in uh, November, on November 14th, 20, 2019, last year, uh, taking over the party from Elash Pimo Jr. And now, let's find out what Mr. President Nirenda uh, intends or plans to transform Zambia. According to him, we have to keep in mind his hashtag that says, Zambia is for Zambians. Let's find out more, Mr. President, welcome to my program. Uh, Mr. Piri Innocent, thanks a lot. Thanks for inviting me once more. Uh, as I, you have already said, mm. Zambia is for Zambians, and only Zambians will develop this country, and no one else. Fantastic. You've been very busy from the time you took over the party in 2019. You haven't rested. You seem to be very busy up and down. Yes. And um, at the same time, again, uh, you, you, you've made sure that your party is making its presence in each and every by-election that the country is holding. Yes. Um, you, you see, since, since I, I was put <coughs> on this seat uh, last year, mm. I, I have I've looked at the ground, at the po political scenario. Mm. I've also uh, studied the narrative itself. Mm. And uh, there were, there's a lot of job. There was a lot of job that needed to be done. Right. And uh, also coupled with the COVID, COVID it became very difficult. Mm. But nevertheless, we developed a, we developed a unique concept. Mm. And we needed to try this concept. Right. And we are still trying it. And now we have known it's the best concept. Mm. Mind you, the first was in Imario. We came <coughs> number three. The mm. second was in Mwansabombo, we came number three. Mm. The last one uh, was again in Mwansabombo. We became two. We mm. beat UPND. That tells you something. That tells you something. And if people don't know, we had, uh, we had a huge margin between uh, UPND and us. Mm. PF was number one for obvious reasons. Mm. We know. I don't want to mention them. You know it for yourself. Mm. So us being number two is as good as being number one in Monsabombe, Mbeleshi mm. Ward. Fantastic, the year is almost ending. Like I did mention in my, my preamble that we've remained with exactly uh, three weeks from now. What, what could be your quick highlights in terms of what you have achieved as a political party from uh, January to December this year, political attainment, the mm. year 2020? Uh, the year 2020 has been very, very difficult. Mm. What we planned to do from November to January or February uh, this year mm. could not take place because of the difficulties, the pandemic, the COVID-19 that mm. we have, uh, we are still having. Mm. But we worked underground. Mm. We are still working underground. And I think we've done tremendous improvement. Mm. The party narrow is no longer what it was. It's up there. It's hitting the waves. Mm. It's uh, where if you go to eastern province right up now, mm. or you go to some parts of western province, even Wapula, mm. you find that the party is really, really hitting 
uh, the ground. Mm. And uh, we know we are in the right course and we are still developing. We still have for some few months to go, three, four months to go. Mm. And uh, we don't doubt mm. that we are going to take the day. You've been campaigning under the new normal, you know, where the COVID-19, where most of you in the opposition were restricted not to, uh, you know, meet in numbers, in masses. You know, how did this affect your political party as now? Well, I, I think that is quite bad. And, and mm. I, I find sometimes, uh, not that I'm blaming people, mm. I find sometimes uh, that certain people are very irresponsible mm. in the sense that they are telling others don't do that, but what they were doing themselves sure. is contrary mm. to what they are telling. And th this is the leadership that you want to kick out. out. Mm. Because uh, if, if, if you say that is good, <coughs> or that is bad, it should be bad for everybody. You mm. cannot say it's good for you, it's good, it's bad for this one. Mm. It doesn't work like that. That's not leadership. That's why I always talk about leadership with a vision, mm. leadership with integrity, and leadership with the principles. Mm. If these things are missing, then you've got a chaotic country the way it is right up now. Mm. It, it, this country right up now is an anarchy. Everybody mm. does what he wants to do. You see, there are so many examples I don't need. To I, I want to believe that you are talking about the abuse or um, a breakdown in the rule of law, you yes. know, in this country, because yes. you, you've just mentioned in terms of that other people were able to meet, you know, in, 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 in large numbers to campaign and the likes. And uh, some of the pictures we have seen, is in public domain, we have seen them, yes. where even the uh, Minister of Health himself, that the man that, that has been advising people really to meet uh, in a one meter apart social distancing, he failed to really comply to all those issues, you know. But I'm trying to drive to the aspect, Mr. President, that the gap is too huge in terms of our governance system. Yes. You know, it's like a lot of things have gone amiss. Yes. How can we amend this together? How can we you, remedy this? You, you see, um, uh, thank you very much. I, mm. I don't like complaining a lot. Right. I like providing solutions. Mm. And if you've seen what we are doing ourselves, we are very little in attacking what okay. others. We are much more on making Practical. solutions. Mm. Practically, everything starts with leadership. And if you've got a leadership that <coughs> is, is, has got all those values that I talked about, mm. then you see that everything is done. Ourselves, how we are going to do it? It will start with the top there, with actually us uh, uh, separating these powers very clearly. Mm. The executive, the judicial, and the legislature. Mm. These three bodies must be completely independent, not being held by one person. In the Meantime, as we are talking about, mm. the president has got all these people, all these three organs in his pocket. He can dangle them where he wants to. Mm. As we are saying, the provision for, 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 for the solution to that is, first of all, to dismantle the powers of the president mm. so that they are limited to his executive functions. Mm. Let the legislature operate on its own. Let the judicial system operate on its own without any interference. Mm. The big interference you can see. You can see where they were driving with the, these guys who stayed in the, in, in, uh, in the office. Mm. If I say the truth, that is treason committed by the president himself. Mm. The president bro broke the constitution. Mm. And if you break the constitution, what is it? Mm. It's treason. And we all gross over. We are talking about these people paying back. Mm. And you know what they are telling us? I can't pay back because I was told the pres uh, by the president. Mm. They are saying, they are not saying I can't pay back because we are taught by the president. No. They are saying mm. follow the president and punish the president because he's the one who committed the cr a crime, not me. This is what they are saying. Mm. And we fail to read between the lines. They are telling us very clearly. Be it the judicial, the, 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 the minister of justice himself, uh, uh, Mr. Luvinda, is telling us that. Mm. Follow the president and go and punish him. He committed treason. Mm. And, and this is why I'm saying ourselves, first of all, we are going to reduce the powers of the executive so that he won't be able to tell the ministers to say do that. He will look at the law, say the law says that. So comply. Mm. We, we, we've heard that uh, really. I'm sure you remember you being a veteran, uh, you know, um, uh, uh, I would say a politician because, of course, you've been doing politics, advising others in the background before you came out, you know, um, to practice politics now. 
uh, I'll call you as a veteran politician. And you've had the people whom you helped to ascend to power today, uh, not only these in, in the PF, but even the previous regime. You've got products whom you had helped to ascend to power. These are the issues they were campaigning on to say when we form government, we ensure that we reduce the powers of a president so that citizens have got a, more, a bigger voice than one man issue. You've talked about the legislator, legislature, you've talked about the executive um, uh, among the judiciary. the judiciary, indeed. And for me, if you ask me, I would say this has become more like a political campaign now. It's a political tool now, yes. whereby for people that are in opposition, mm. you'd want to use that to quickly uh, manipulate, for lack of better words, the mindset yes. of the Zambians. Yes. You know, when you say reducing the powers of a president, yes. what are we talking about here? Um, first of all, uh, there are two things that I take from what you are mm. saying. You are saying we have got the people mm. that will help PF themselves. Mm. We really sure. did quite a sure. lot for them to be there mm. where they are. Um, and many other and people. And they did promise us that to, exactly. if they, or when they form government, they are going to reduce the powers of exactly. the president, as well as the cabinet to reduce it further. Exactly. What we thought was an extension of the cabinet, yes. more the ministries. Yes. You know. Immediately, uh, you sit there, first of all, it becomes a suite. Exactly. Uh, sometimes it's you know. better, before you test that suite, mm. you make rules. And we are saying, myself, before I sit in that seat, mm. I will say, this is what I said. My first speech, my first writing of mm. that speech should include that these powers are done like that. Right. The appointing powers of the president need to be reduced mm. completely. You look at ECZ. ECZ would dance to the tune mm. of the president. Yesterday he said, I will ask them to extend. Mm. They will do it. If he tells them to say, don't extend, they will not do it. Mm. They should be autonomous. They should operate according to the rules put down. Right. When I'm talking to some people in my other uh, world, uh, world of mm. business, I say, look at a bigger bank or an institution whose headquarters is in New York or somewhere else, but the guy who is sitting here is complying exactly. It's about the set of rules. Mm. There are set of rules that empower you to do certain things not outside there. Mm. So the executive and its legislation, legislating body, mm. they need to set rules. In those rules, they are the <coughs> ones that are going to, comp co to, 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 to make uh, the, the agents mm. like ECZ, the police, and so on and so on, operate professionally mm. without actually looking at what is my boss saying. No, right. operate according to the rules. And that's what we are going to do ourselves. But you don't see it now. You don't see. We have got young people uh, who are young ministers. Some of them, I don't like mentioning names, but uh, is it uh, this young minister, local of government or mm. local government or whatever? Mm. I don't mention, I'm mentioning the, 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 the chairs. The institution. He went through this institution right. as a diehard MMD. We pushed him up, we did that, he became, and he was there. Later on, he changed to PF as a minister. What is he doing? He is doing exactly the opposite of what he was saying when he was here. Mm -hmm. Now, what I say, uh, 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 Mr. Piri, what I say, when you want to marry, mm -hmm. you go and check the family of where you want to marry. Some people check even the history of, of whether they have got bad diseases and things like that. Mm. You check the behavior. Me, I go mostly for the, I would uh, say you go for the behavior. How is this, what, uh, what is the, the, the family like? Mm. That's what you check. And then you go and propose. What I mean is that when we are voting for these leaders, check where they are coming from. What have they done? What are their tendencies? And don't just go for popularity. No. Look at what these guys have done. The MP, the Chancellor, and the President himself, they are like people you want to court. They are people you want to bring in your management system. So check them. And once you find that they are not, leave them. What we are doing in Zambia, we go and choose the people that we know very well, mm. that they don't have the capability, mm. or where they are coming from, they have either stolen or done anything, but you still vote for them. Mm. Don't. You don't want to go and marry a lady who is a thief, mm. or a, ma a, a lady who is always patronizing bars, mm. or a lady who is always patronizing whichever areas, vice versa. 
you do not want that. So check the character of a, politi of a politician who you are going to vote. Check the capability, the thinking capability, the governing capability of that politician. And I believe you me, I have different qualities compared to my friends. If nobody tells them, mm. I should tell them because I want to sell myself. Mm. I say my qualities, my governing qualities are better than anyone else as I'm talking today. Let's talk about, uh, I, I know that we've got uh, two week, uh, three weeks rather before the year comes to an end. Uh, how do you hope to end uh, this year? I, I know that we've got a rally. Was it tomorrow, Sunday? Um, here in Lusaka. Yes. You know, what other activities have you lined up as a party? Well, um, after my rally, I'm going back to Eastern Province mm. uh, uh, to, to, to continue there where uh, we have left. We, mm. Our plan is that b I this December, even all my Christmas, mm. everything I was ten spend in uh, Eastern Province. Right. When I come there, then I've got other areas to go. But mm. The November, December is marked, earmarked for Eastern Province. What's the agenda for tomorrow's uh, rally? W what issues are you looking at? You know, what message really um, do you feel will be of wise to the people? First, first, first of all, uh, Mr. Piri, we are talking about leadership here. Yeah. Right. People need to know, the public outside there needs to know why we are here where we are. Mm. Why are we suffering? Why is a Zambian suffering? What wrong have we done? Is an Indian better than me? Is a Chinese better than me? Is a white man better than me in my own home, in my own country? That I want to tell the people. To say, look, you are better than anyone else in this country. Everybody else must be below a Zambian in this country. But that's not what it is. Everyone else, starting from an Indian, uh, whether it's Zambian Indian or not, mm. uh, whether it's a Lebanese, whether it's a, 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 a European, mm. whether it's a Chinese, and whether today, even whether you are Rwand Rwandese now, or whether you are coming from West Africa, you are better, you live a better life than a Zambian in my own country. Mm. That shouldn't be. Zambia is for Zambians, and only Zambians who develop this country. Mm. But what has gone wrong? It's the leadership. It's the leadership. In my own house, I must make my children better, give them a better position than those that are not my children. I'm not choosing. I'm not choosing. Right. But I'm saying I cannot promote my neighbor's children and I leave mine. Mm. If, if at all, let me pro do all of them. But first of all, my children have got the first priority and the other second. That's why I'm saying in Zambia here, a Zambian must live a better life than any other foreigner who comes. Mm. There is no way I can be a slave to an Indian. I can be a slave to a Lebanese. I can be a slave to a Chinese. And this is what is happening. And that's what I want to tell the people. And it's about leadership. And me, my leadership, is going to make sure that the Zambian is number one. No ill feeling. I'm not going to vindict anyone. I'm not going to chase any foreigner. I'm not going to do any bad things to a foreigner, but I will give a Zambian better, better chances for him to develop than any other. That's what it is. I will tell you about this institution where you are. Mm. A Chinese has got better options to develop in this country than you. Mm. Look, look at what, what the others are given. Mm. Let's even go to the telecom, which I know. They are foreigners who are better placed than the, the local telecoms. How, how come that Zamtel is low, lower than anybody else? Not because Zamtel is a government institution, no. There are lots of priorities that are not given. The first thing I would do, first of all, I would make sure that anybody who gets a Zamtel and buys Zamtel and things like that, mm -hmm. he has got more incentives than the one who buys uh, anyone else. If you go to, to South Africa, MTN is number one. There's nobody who can beat MTN. Mm. If you go to where Airtel comes from, Airtel is number one. So why? If you go to, 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 to Nigeria, uh, uh, is it Glo or Iglo? Is number one. No one else. What is wrong with us Zambians? It's the leadership. It's the leadership. 
the leadership must do certain things to make sure they promote their people. That's why we are saying that every district is going to have millionaires, Zambian millionaires, who are going to promote the Zambians and get up. That's what the difference is. Are you talking about Lusaka district that you'll be addressing tomorrow? Yes. Um, others are going to argue with you to say, uh, what is Mr. Nirenda talking about? Because, you know, the Patriotic Front, they seem to be enjoying, you know, um, a large percentage in terms of uh, the, the, the following, the followers in Lusaka. You know, and uh, if you look at some of the problems we have in Lusaka, we can talk about issues of, uh, you know, poor drainage system. Mm. You can talk about, uh, politically, we can go to the uh, mismanagement of funds in the markets, bus stations, why fund that cutters. They... They, they are not being controlled. In, in, in short, they are in charge mm. of these bus stations. We can't hide all these things. Yes. So really, how, what methods or, or solution have you put in place to transform the mindset of Lusaka residents, the yes. people you'll be addressing tomorrow, yes. to say this is the true leadership or the correct leadership we're talking about? You see, um, if, if I, I don't know, I, I heard you saying that mm -hmm. The PF, they have got a large following sure. here. Mm. No, they don't. Right. Uh, if you go outside there, mm. even the PF themselves, they will tell you not to Chulasana. Right. Yeah? If I'm going to take 10 people mm. and ask, you will be lucky if you are going to have two or three who will be for PF. Right. People are doing things because there's appeasement, because mm. they are forced, right. because they are living in fear. Yeah? I should do. Right up now, even in markets, the markets, they have been told, you don't show uh, the voters' card, we chase you. Mm. You know, you can't have a, a, a country the way it is. Let me just reduce to Lusaka. You are talking about Lusaka. Indeed. In Lusaka, there's anarchy beyond anything else. You go to markets, the cutters are controlling. You go to the city center, the owners of those businesses, the buses, they are suffering. How do you take 50? Is it 50 kwacha for every passenger they load? They take 50 kwacha and pay to the cutters. Why? Where on earth? How can the council su uh, 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 survive? You know, these roads that they are expanding here in Lusaka and every, all this infrastructure within Lusaka, it is not the job of the central government. It's not the job of uh, the Republican president. Mm. It's the job of the municipal, it's the job of the, 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 the council, it's the job of the mayor and his team. They are going there because they want to find somewhere where they can uh, milk certain things. It's not a job. They are the city council. The city council is supposed to plan. But where will the city council get the money from? Because the card has taken everything. Mm -hmm. They have taken the plots, they've taken all this. Us, where we are concerned. That is not going to be there. If you are a cadre, you think that you are going to be with us mm. in the government and you are going to control citizen and whatever, you are lying to yourself. The cadarism or thadarism is going to finish in 2021. Mm. From the 12th of December, of, of, of August 2021, it will finish. Mm. It will finish. Go and have a proper job. We will provide proper jobs, not to go and terrorize people. Mm. The PF is not popular. If at all, why are they panicking? Why are they putting a lot of things to vindicate others mm. if they are popular? They should give, get an example like in Ghana. Follow what happened in, uh, happened in Ghana. Mm. The very peaceful uh, election, mm. a very fair and well-organized election, better than what we saw in America. It is in Ghana, some two or three days ago. But the guy gave every opposition party got what they needed to get. No vindic vindictiveness, no what, everything was fantastic. And the guy was voted back into power. If, if the Republican president, if Mr. Lungu and his PF, mm. they are so popular, why are they vindicting us? Mm. Why are they using the police? Why are they using ECZ? Why are they using all their agents to vindict the opposition? Mm. They should come clean. Don't go into a ring, you want to go and box, it's unfair. And that's what PF is doing. And the PF is bragging, you know, the PF is bragging to say 
2021 it will be it's going to be a walkover because of uh, the massive de developmental um, you know projects <laughs> that you know they have done. Uh, when you talk about Lusaka, they are going to show you the you know the, the good road networks and uh, also they will look at the bridges as well. You know the bridges that are being commissioned almost each and every month. You remember last time, I think, uh, on a lighter note, where the president was commissioning the, the other bridge somewhere at uh, East Park, and he said, uh, you know, uh, if we and uh, to You know, that's what you remember that on a lighter I, I note. I do. The yeah. first thing that I said, I, mm. I, I think the president needed to apologize. I asked right. him to apologize. He hasn't apologized. Right. I know he won't apologize because it's their, mm. it's their way of doing things. He cannot say that we mm. are the people who put him there. Mm. Us, whether I voted for him or not, but he is the president of all of us. And he has got no right to insult any of his public people. Mm. And that's an insult. Right. And that's what I'm saying. That is wrong. It shows that he doesn't have the caliber to become a president. Right. Yes, immediately I'm going to say, even here on camera, immediately I'm going to, to say something against the voter, something against the public. I am not fit to be the president. I'm saying President Lungu is not fit to be the president. Mm. And you see what is happening. Mm. It's, it's a, a normal thing for them just to say that. But mm. let me come to the, what they call development. Sure. You see, I want to laugh. Mm. I think that President Lungu now has been a bit uh, exposed since he became a president. Mm. If he never traveled before, now he's traveling. He goes to South Africa, he goes to Dubai, he goes to China. He sees what development is. Mm. Now, if he tells, he tells us that this is development, sure. I think he hasn't yet been exposed. We need to expose him more. Let's give him more flights to America and everywhere mm. so that he can be exposed and he will know what development is. Mm. This is not development. By the way, I went to Lundazi. Right. You know, I'm, I came from Eastern mm. Tua. Just before you enter Lundazi, there's a big river. Mm. That river was swept last, the bridge, there's a big river and a big bridge. Mm. That bridge was swept two years ago, and people died on that bridge. That bridge is like this. You saw my posting mm. on, on, on one. It's like this today. You have to go all around, covered on another 15 or 20, 30 kilometers in order, whilst you have already reached in order to come to Nundas. Mm -hmm. Is that development? Let people judge for themselves. You leave that for two years. You come here and do these bridges that have got nothing to do. Is that development? I will leave to the people to judge who, who President Lungu is. I will leave to the people to judge whether President Lungu deserves a vote next year. I'll leave it there. I will not talk. They have said that uh, Rome was not built in one day. Maybe this could be just a genesis, according to them. Which, you which know. is genesis? Mm. Genesis, you, you know, uh, if we have done what people call uh, public relations, mm. you need, first of all, to make that particular person able, be able. He needs to fill his stomach first. Mm. Then Uzambo Ganiza, what next? Ognes Kapena Nifuna a roof over me. What mm. next? And so on and so on. The people who have done these public relations, they'll tell you mm. what it is. You cannot, you cannot be building these bridges when your people are sick, mm. when your people are not educated, when your people have no food, when the people have got no access road to their homes. Mm. You can't. There's some thinking mistake somewhere, somehow. And that's why we want to correct. Mind you, mm. uh, I say to everyone else, sure. for me, it is not about me becoming a president. In fact, I would have lived a better life if I never stood, because the work that I'm doing is not easy. Right. It's not easy. Every day, it's like I'm shedding tears. There is nowhere where I'm going where I'm happy. Mm -hmm. I feel I can't sleep and so on, but I want to do it, I'll do it. I'm doing it for my people, for my children, for my sisters, my brothers, and everyone else. Mm -hmm. I've taken it in my own hands, I will do it. But... If you see what is going on, what is going on in this country today, you can't believe. First of all, educate the people. And once the people they are educated, they will know what food to eat. Food is medicine. They will know how to live. They, you, they, they will know how to build their own houses, how to build their lives. And then they will be, be, build the, the, the country up. That's when now you can talk about build, Rome was not built in one year. 
in this country since 1964 everything is going down every year there is nothing that you can tell me to say no everything is going down we inherited lots of good things in 1964 all those things are going down 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 what type of people what type of leadership are we having this leadership must go bring bring fresh minds not the cycle the politicians and some of them they are just eyeing you can see them in these other political parties these people need to be scrapped off bring new people the younger ones guided by those people with wisdom mm. to push this country up we don't need the recycled politicians to hell with them let them go out don't vote for them vote for new people people with a new blood new blood mm. and new ways of thinking and th that's something for me i've mentioned i think uh, with a number of guests that have joined me uh, in my previous episodes to say you know what sometimes you politicians talk about this seems to be more like uh, you know rhetorics you know because when you talk about recycled politicians of course we have seen them like you've mentioned on your own you've been in this country for a long time when they see that this political party is about to form a government the, those in the opposition they quickly move and join the ruling party and they, for god's sake they are accommodated to work with the the, the, the ruling party and the likes you saw it in in, in, in the pf they yeah accommodated a lot of people from the MMD, yeah. the people that were rejected by the Zamen people. Yeah. Even, for God's sake again, not to demonize any other political party here, but I need to first to, to tell the, the facts that even if you check the UPND right now, there are people that are coming or that came from the PF as well as the MMD are still there working together. Yeah. You know, this goes to show me or tell me to say that perhaps even when NAREP, if you form government next year, you are going to accommodate the same people to work with, hence changing the system will be difficult. Um, um, Mr. Piri mm. and the viewers outside there, I, I can assure you 100% mm. that we will allow everyone to be a member. Mm. If you are PF, you are what, you can be our member. Right. But forget if you think that you have been a recycled politician, mm. you are going to have a position in this government of, of, of NAREP. Forget about it. Forget. We will accommodate you as a member. Right. We will even listen to you. But we want fresh people. Mm -hmm. And we, we have even our shadow government, government if I, I can't just reveal it here, because most of them, mm -hmm. they are powerful guys in the government, young people, and so on and so on. Right. Our people, they are fresh-minded people. And I'm fresh. Don't I? I'm one year in active politics. Sure. Very fresh powerful, dynamic, mm. I have got the wisdom to lead a young team, mm. to push them up. They will do the job. Their thinking is different. They look at things different. Mine is to unite them, to give them wisdom, to show them which, which way to go. Mm. And I, I've got no doubt. We have other parties. I laugh about mm. them. You look at them, they are people who have... <laughs> come out, <laughs> they have come out from the government, mm -hmm. they have set up, uh, perhaps let me not go there, because if I go much down there, I'll say, this man is uh, being sarcastic to other parties, but let me leave it there, I don't want to continue. <laughs> right. Um, on your way to uh, Eastern Province, that was uh, early this week, I think there's a picture that has gone viral, uh, people talked about almost in various, you know, uh, WhatsApp groups as well as Facebook, uh, and we didn't understand what was behind, you know, that um, um, uh, uh, move or that stoppage. I don't know which area was that. You'll be able to tell us. I'm sure that's a picture. And uh, people have talked about uh, that picture a lot. Uh, Steve Nirenda was crying. Others said, no, he wasn't crying. You know, tell us you are here now. What was, was happening there? I, I cried throughout Eastern Province. Mm. I cried throughout Eastern Province. Mind you, when I was going to Eastern Province, I passed through every... I went until I started the, from Chama. Right. I started crying in Chama. Where I went, you saw there's another picture. I don't know. That's a picture for me which should have, should have gone viral. Right. There are a place, there's a place 
where people are drinking water, uh, kids are also washing and, and uh, uh, um, doing uh, or urinating and all the stuff. Animals are also dro droppings there and so on and so on. You looked at that water, the people were drinking that water. I went, I cried, and I took that water liter, in liters and I drank that water. I said, what happens to these people, let it also happen to me. Right. Here I am. But that for me, wherever I went in Eastern Province, mm -hmm. I went into a certain village where I met a couple of 12 year, 13 year old children, having children. A 14 year child having two children. I went there, I, you know, that for me was weeping because you look at this person, there's no future, there's nothing. And those are the areas. Now, as I was coming, all coming, what I saw at the border there, the, the way these guys are suffering there, it was bad. There's some pictures in the background which, what is not showing, right. but people are really suffering. They are suffering. You can cry throughout. I think my media... What, 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 what suffering are you talking about here? What, what challenges did you find? Y you see, those people by the roadside? The you, you see, the... there is poverty. You have people who are lame, people who have got no clothes, people who have got children who haven't had meals for days and days, mm. people who cannot sell, not even a piece of just that fish. I tried. I tried to buy from each, and my money was... I had finished the inquest that I had. So I said, what do I do next? What do I do? I cried for them. I couldn't, you know, I was, the, the fish is cheap, but I didn't have money anymore to make sure that everybody I buy, that everybody has got just that five kwacha to go and buy some food for the child. Mm -hmm. And they are exhausted. So I just said, I, I don't know next. I really don't know next. Mm -hmm. That was that what was there. And we, I left there Literally, live without leaving that one kwacha, that two kwacha, the people there, they were, they just wanted a five kwacha. One animal now, please five kwacha. How do you do that? Is it possible to satisfy the aspirations or the interests of all Zambians if you are in power? You, you imagine you are the president. Are you able to satisfy the? You know, I I, I met uh, um, a, a, a new friend recently. Mm. Um, you know what he told me? Mm. He said, uh, my concern is not uh, uh, Zambia when I look at Africa. Right. My concern is uh, everything in Africa. My concern mm. in Zambia is about every Zambian. Then he drew mm. to myself. He said, you know, Mr. Jirenda, if today I took this needle mm. and I pricked your toe, just your toe, mm. I pricked through, tomorrow you will not wake up. If sometimes the whole week, and you have to take the whole body to the hospital, the whole entire of you, because of the little toe. Therefore, a leader of this country needs to know his little toe, his little person, wherever he is found in this Zambia of ours. He needs to know somebody who is in Shangombo, somebody who is in Chama, somebody who is in Livingstone, somebody who is in, in Mansa, mm. somebody who is in Solowezi. He needs to know that is his concern. Mm. And if you have leaders like these people, they don't care about a guy who died in Ndazi River, a guy who died in Mansa, a guy who died, they are not leaders. They are not a body. Mm. They are one by one. A body is that when you feel pain in one, you have to take the whole body to the hospital. That's a leader who takes the whole Zambia in his lap. Mm -hmm. And if something is crying in one corner, he will know. Because he's got agents, he's got nerves. He's the central organ of the brain. Mm -hmm. And the nerves are all over his body. Those are agents that he has. They are the policemen, the intelligence, the what, the medical what. Everybody else at the end of the day forms the government that feeds him. Mind you, the president gets information every day. Mm -hmm. Every day he's informed nicely. If there's an emergency, he'll be informed. He knows, but he doesn't want. The president 
the executive is like a central organ. Mm -hmm. He gets information from the toe, from the fingers, everywhere. It's him to neglect to say, ah, she can do That's what he does. Mm -hmm. that's, that's why I'm saying these are not leaders. Right. They belong in, the, in compounds. They belong somewhere in the corner. We'll take care of them nicely. We'll put them somewhere. We'll put this president in a very powerful place and we'll take care of him. This is our president. Mm. Yes, we will take care of him very nicely until he is old and so on and so on. That's what we will do. And Talking about the plights of um, Zambians, uh, my concern really is how NARUP is going to address the plights of the poor Zambians. And um, I think a week ago I did host um, one you know, leader from the Zambia Agents for Persons with Disabilities and did lament on this program to say, according to them, uh, it's like most of your manifestos or your policies in your manifestos are not addressing their challenges, you know, and they feel neglected. Even mm -hmm. the messages when you are campaigning, uh, they are not accommodative. Mm -hmm. Really, how different is Nare from other political parties? I, I think when mm -hmm. you look very clearly on our manifesto, by the way, mm -hmm. we have one disabled uh, uh, who is the aspiring candidate in Mansa. Exactly, I think that was my interest as well, yes. to say how are you yes. going to ensure that you work together, even yes. adopting them during yes, yes. You know, the, the next uh, so election So far we coming. have about four yeah. or five of them. Right. I know about the four. Mm. four. One is in Mansa who I'm with every day, I'm talking to him. Fantastic. He's blind mm. and he's, yeah, we have got the, another one, Instant mm. Protest, who I met, is also disabled. Mm. So we've got quite a number of them. But you know, um, uh, it is not as easy mm. as actually saying we are going to do this and this and this sure. and this. No. Talking is so easy. Mm. And this is why I say most of the times, I can come here and tell you all the good stuff. Sure. Look at me where I'm coming from. Am I the, the track person record. who can do mm. that? Do I have that track record? Mm. So a lot of people, they talk. But uh, this is why uh, I go even further to talk about the recycled politicians. Mm. Because what is that that they are going to do, what they should not have done, or that the, 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 why they couldn't have done mm. where they were? Right. So as in our uh, manifesto, we do address each and every person. Mm. And this is why I gave you an example of a toe. Mm. If a toe is pending, you drag yourself. So the leadership must embrace each and every person. One thing that I talk about, again, I've talked about every now and then, it's the, the psychiatric hospitals. Right. These guys have built hospitals here and there. Mm. Where do we have actually psychiatric hospitals? Very minimal. You got even, even the Chinama we have is not developed. It's the way it was. There are problems. There are limited numbers of doctors in, in psychiatric uh, uh, department. Mm. That is one huge problem. Now, the other thing, you know, when I move around in all these areas, dentists, we don't have dentists. If you go in all these areas, in the deep, deep villages, mm. the teeth of the people is out. Right. Because they don't know where to go. You have in the whole area, perhaps the whole district, not even a single dentist. Where on earth? And, and this is why I'm saying, this is not a government of inclusiveness. This is not leadership of inclusiveness. They do not think that they have got hairs. They do not think that they have got toes. They do not think they have got a body somewhere else. So when you wash yourself, you take care of everything that you have. When you provide whatever you provide, you take care. Provide also for those people. Provide for the psychiatric mm. uh, 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 people who need psychiatric med uh, medical attention. Mm. Provide for disabled in different areas. Mm. You know, in fact, the, uh, when you talk about disabled or people with different ab uh, mm. abilities, mm. they are even magnified. There are a lot of departments, a lot of sectors where you have people that are just neglected. Children with leukemia, for example. Mm -hmm. There are those children that are mentally retarded. I don't know whether, whether it's a nerve system. Mm -hmm. There's nothing for them. 
and the only people who are taking care of them is sometimes an NGO or somewhere else. You have covered some of them here. Sure. So, and those people, it's nothing to do with the different abilities. Mm -hmm. It's a certain area which you need to look at. All those things are neglected. You don't talk about them. Mm -hmm. They go and start talking of things, certain things that are irrelevant. They talk about bridges. They talk about this. They talk about, please, we have a bigger assignment to do here in this country. Right. Let's move on, Mr. President. And now I will take your attention to one of the critical issues we've been talking about for a long time now, the voter registration that uh, commenced on November 9th. And uh, today it has come to a close, as announced by the Electoral Commission of Zambia. But again, according to the advocates, you know, the demands that have been made by people like you and the other leaders, uh, members of the CSOs, uh, on the need for the commission to ex extend the process. The answer has been given, and indeed the commission has responded accordingly that they are going to extend the voter registration. And the duration will be announced that will be on Tuesday uh, next week. How do you feel now? Do you feel uh, succeeded? Yes, but I'm not happy. Right. They should say it, it should be open until the last person does register. Mm. You know, uh, it is constitutional mm. that uh, the, the, the registration should be ongoing. Sure. Why did they, in fact, they are breaking the law. Right. That's again, if you want to say treason. Mm. Why do they limit to one month? Why do they limit to two months? Why do they want to talk about the duration when the law says it should be ongoing? Now, I know there are all these NGOs and things like that. Perhaps they have got enough money as NGOs. Why don't they take these guys to court to make sure that we have got a judicial review? Mm -hmm. I may not do it. Perhaps my, my, my funds are limited. Mm -hmm. But there are other people who live from it. Those are NGOs. I advocate that the NGOs should take ECZ to court because the law says it should be ongoing. I'm happy that they have extended, mm. but not very happy. So I'm also very disappointed mm. with the whole machinery of ECZ because they lied to us. Right. They took us uh, as at the presidential summit mm. where the Republican president, the president of Zambia, mm. was seated there with all the opposition presidents. Mm. That should be the, the top notch of the, of the country, right? Mm. And here stood... Uh, uh, the CEO of, and he told us lies. He said it will be 30 days times 30, 30, vo 30 votes per day times 8,999 polling stations. It gives to 8.9 million. But what they have done is less than 7 million or whatever. So he lied. They lied to us. Now, for making that mistake, there should be a punishment. You can't be making mistakes. And what, what, what punishment should be done there? If I was the, the one, I would fire them. Put the other people. I would fire them. Hmm. Because they haven't done the job. They are lying to the whole country. They are lying to the president. They are misleading the president. They are misleading the executive on the, the governing body of this country. Hmm. Move them out to put the people who can do the job, who can think properly. Mind you, I always advocated that all the registration of NRC and voters card must be automatic. Mm. There must not be a human touch there. It is, the system must know to say, Mr. Innocent PD, today you are 16 years uh, NRC, automatic. Yeah, Mr. Innocent PD, today you are 18, here is your voters card. I don't need to go and queue. These things are there all over, but they choose. Which, which one benefits me, which I can use to manipulate the people? Which one doesn't? So they choose what to take. We are living in the digital world. Mm. Yeah? Somebody was telling me, a young lady was telling me to say, we are going into the fourth re revolution, digital revolution. Mm. And us, we want to live as if we're in the Bush, 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 Bush time, uh, mentality of, of Bush. Yeah? Mm. We don't want to to, to, to embrace technology. We want still to live like that. Mm. ECZ, they are, we saw them uh, having 
is sophisticated uh, IT. Mm -hmm. And why do they use sophisticated IT where they want where they want it? But where it is necessary, they do it away and put human touch. Mm -hmm. What is the reason behind it? We ask him. Give an answer to the Zambian people. And Zambian people, don't be taken for granted. Mm -hmm. Know what to do when that day comes in August 12, 2021. Kick out this and put the people who can govern this country. Is it just that we, we, we are fond of uh, demonizing the, the Electoral Commission of Zambia? You know, as Zambians, as well as most especially people like you from the opposition, that you just want to discredit the work of the commission. You know, this is a commission that has ushered in you know, different regimes in government. The UNIP, it came to the MMD, <laughs> now the PF. Uh, Mr. You Mr. Know. Peter, I can only laugh. Hmm. First of all... How look, compromise is this commission? Uh, yes, let's look. Hmm. First of all, look at your voters' card now. Hmm. Compare your voters' card, which you have discarded, and the new one, what you have. Hmm. Why should we come from the top and we go down? We'll encourage... Hmm. That's what is going on. First of all, it's not demoralizing. The product shows. Secondly, they go and lie to the whole nation to say we'll make it in, in, the whole, in 30 days. They don't even make it to make even three quarters of it. So what is demonizing? It's not demonizing. The results show for itself. First of all, they don't listen to the people. We try to tell them how, and they don't consult. They want to do things on their own. Mm. And this is where the problem is mostly uh, in, in, in Zambia. Mm. I don't want to talk about Africa. Is that our governments, mm. our, our governments have never consulted the people who are inside. Like, let me talk about your career mm. as a journalist. If they want to do the best for the journalists, they should put you together and sit with you. The president must invite you sure. for a retreat. Mm -hmm. Have two or three days with him. Let him listen to you. And his people will take notes. And as he's going to govern later, he will know what plight, how to put the regulations for you. Right. I, I have seen governments somewhere else. Mm -hmm. That has always deliberately taken sector by sector. Mm. Today I'm going to talk to minors in a casual way. Listen to them. The other day I'm going to take the, the people in, the, in, the, in broadcasting. Talk to them. The other day I'm going to take the farmers. The other day I'm, talking, I'm going to take those guys who are farming. It's right. a listening government. And those things, when they put them together, they're going to form. These guys don't do it. Certain things that they do, you can just laugh about it. You know, when you look at the way Zambia is governed, it's monga one of behind ku 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 vachita madimba, tikaba madimba, matenga vima doti vija, na kapoto kangono wa mbofaka manzi, na mnashite na madoti upikati, na pika nsima, bweran mudie. Things like that. Because I don't understand why the country is being run the way it is run. It can't. The president cannot stand up and sit down and tell us why they are failing to pay. The president cannot put the people together to say, you guys, can you find a solution for this? Mm -hmm. The president can, has got no, no time to engage his people. Mm -hmm. Where on earth? And then you have got a country mm -hmm. which has got no think tank, a country that has got no elite schools, a country that has got no elite universities, mm. a country that has got no elite research centers. Mm. You leave your country wide open to the foreigners to just take and do what they want to do. It, it, one thing that I cried when I went to Eastern Province, mm. as uh, my guy was telling me Eastern Province looks like a very big farm. It is a big farm. But do you know what they have done? Mm. They have let the country be robbed wide by the foreigners who are bringing the seed that we don't know. And this seed is coupled, coupled with the chemicals that they bring. You cannot move. If you don't go back to them, you don't have money, you are gone. The country needs to have its own seed that it develops its own, that has got a specific conditions mm. that are adapted to the, to the, to the uh, forces that are in that country. Mm. 
Why should my seed not germinate in Nondazi? Why should my seed not germinate in, Chem, in, in Choma? Only if I've got fertilizers, mm. they have captured us. It's the government, it's the leadership. If this country had the, what you call a research center, which we have, Mount Bakul, and they don't listen to them. I had a chat with one of the, the doctors there um, the, um, who was telling us there are things that we have done for this country, but nobody cares about them. No consulting. So this country has got no think tank. And because the country has got no think tank, Nichiwombe Bombe, Chipante Pante, you will start shooting in the dark. Chiri Chonsi Chamecha Chitika Tienti Sekwech, Tienti Sekwech, Vintusvich Tika. For the first time uh, in the history of Zambia, the electoral system has accommodated um, inmates, our brothers and sisters in prisons. You know, does it show inclusivity? Hmm. Uh, you know, I, hmm. I can just laugh. Uh, we were told that it is law. Hmm. It, uh, within, I think last year, the, hmm. the Concord sat and they said this law should be done. Hmm. What is law is law. Let it be done. Hmm. But it's the way it is being done. They are saying, for example, that uh, uh, the opposition, it will be very difficult for them to go there, mm -hmm. to go and sensitize the people. How will those guys know about me? There's no way. Mm -hmm. There's no way how those guys are going to know about my manifesto, what I'm going to do for them, and so mm -hmm. on. Whilst, whilst them, they are using the the people that are working there, they are part and parcel of the government. Mm -hmm. We said that the, the executive is an appointing body, is an appointing authority of even Dr. Gisela, sure. who is the boss there. Mm -hmm. And we saw him shortly, last, was last or beginning of this year, mm -hmm. he was siding with the government. Now, what do you think I would think? I, I have great respect for this man. And he, up to that time, I thought he was a man of integrity. Mm. But when I saw him siding with the government, threatening the opposition, I said, no, this is not the right person. Mm. We advocate that let the law be done, mm. but it's the way it is done. It must be 50-50. What is good for President Lungu mm. should be good for me. What is bad for him or for me should also be bad for, for him. There is no way he himself he can go there and start campaigning, and I can't go there to campaign. That's not right. And we have seen they've been moving prison to prison with him, trying to open this, this, and this. That's a campaign. Mm. So I am saying, first of all, if you want to do it, do it in such a manner that is good for now. They have gone to do uh, NRCs. Mm. Now, let me ask you this question. The person who gets, the, first of all, um, arrested or convicted to go to correctional centers mm. is a person who is grown up. Yeah? How do they know that he's grown up? It's because he, have an, he has an NRC. Sure. So, so wh what, what, why do you want to make another NRC for him? Mm. I mean, th there is the, the, everybody, his, the thinking of the people he is not right. Even the people who are doing those, they think we are stupid, we are Zambians. No. Mm. This is uh, the, not correct. Th that starting this point from the was whole. given today by the commission, according to uh, Mr. Nshindano, mm. he said um, those NRC, new NRCs are only given to those inmates who lost their, 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 their NRCs. Mm. Those that have already, they're not given. <laughs> All they are given is the voters' cards. That's, those are the answers that were given today. It's, the media it's, it's amazing. Mm. When you go here in Lusaka on all these centers, mm. you've got uh, hundreds of thousands mm. who lost their NRC. It's sure. very difficult to get. People have been sleeping on the line. What is so special about somebody who is in prison, about somebody who broke the law, and you leave somebody, a good citizen, a good uh, caring citizen, you leave him, yes, law-abiding citizen, you leave him, you go for that one first. How special is that? Does it make sense? It doesn't. This PF government doesn't make sense. Mm. The a a ECZ, they don't make sense. For me, they don't. Mm. And, you know, sometimes Ukakaniza Maning said, what is wrong with these people? Why can't they do the right thing? You know, they are making so many mistakes that even mistakes now, <laughs> they, you know, you start questioning the, 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 the capability or the sen sameness 
Oh, over there thinking. I'm All right. sorry, but I want to. Let, 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 let's move on, Mr. President. Now, finally, I think we will discuss the issue of uh, the former cabinet ministers, the 63 former cabinet ministers that illegally stayed in office. If you remember last year, we had a lot of debate. Uh, that took us close to, you know, three months because people are debating. Is it in order for these ministers to remain in office during campaigns? And we saw different, you know, um, legal professions coming out, giving their own interpretation, just under simple article um, 81, clause 3, that states um, when parliament shall dissolve at least three months before the election. Mm. But for the first time in the history of Zambia, we had to compromise on that article itself. The mm. article been complying for the past 52 uh, years. Last year it was a different case. And today the Coney Court has ruled to say they have to pay back the monies. Mm. How do you feel now? You, 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 you understand now mm. uh, why uh, uh, I posted that uh, on social media mm. where I was toasting uh, when Bill 10 failed. Mm. Because if Bill 10 had gone through, this is exactly mm. what was going to, to happen, that such things were going to when become normal. Legalized. Yes. And you have seen. You have seen they are being exposed. They will be exposed even much more. For the Concord to have ruled that way, mm. it's good. It's, but what I said before, these guys, and unfortunately, again, mm. you have other people who are outside, the other friends of mine who are opposition, right. who committed the same uh, 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 offense. Mm. If they want to be president as they want, they should have stood up first and gone to pay, to say, no, I think that was wrong. Here is my payment. Well before this, you want to become a president. You want to be dragged to do the right thing. I don't mind. Me, I don't care whether people are saying uh, you are uh, criticizing your fellow opposition. Mm -hmm. What is right is right. What is wrong is wrong. Those ministers who were in the government, who got that money, they are now out. They have got their, par their parties, and they want to be voted in as president. They should never even come here. They should be disqualified because they committed a crime. Secondly, that is again the president, the Republican president. So I can mention the names if you want. Sure. I will start with the, he himself, the president, the Republican president, Mr. Lungu. Mm. He is not qualified to take part. Number two is the Kalaba. Mm. Number three is the Mr. Mtati. Number four is Kambwiri. These people, they all committed this crime. They should not take part in the 2021 elections. Right. Look at them. I, I want to be quoted that I said that you can put it in the news the way I'm saying. That is this, these people, they are not eligible to stand right. because they committed a crime, mm -hmm. as the Concord said. And they haven't paid the money. Mm -hmm. So why? Why should, they, should the people literally stand up and go and throw a vote for them? They shouldn't. And, this, and for me, I'm saying this, if these people literally they want to argue with me, they can take me on, that they are wrong. Mm. Of we course, need, we, we, we had need others to say they were instructed by the president to, to remain in office. I've not mentioned them under what is called collective agreement. I've mentioned, you know, you know I've just tackled of the people who are vying for the number one. Exactly. Yes. And those are the people I want to make mention here. That yes. There are, others have come out to say they illegally stayed in office because there was a directive coming from the president, who is a number one citizen. Yes. You know, so they were instructed I liked as cabinet ministers at that, that time. I, I liked the way someone was answering you the other day. Mm. I, I saw it when he was saying, if the, the, the president tells you kill that person, are you going to kill that person? What is wrong is wrong. This, we have, if they did not know that they are wrong, the Concord has told them that they are wrong. Not only now. They were told, I think it was last year, last year. Mm -hmm. But still, they are there. They just ignore. What makes you feel that you are more than the law? What makes the president feel that he's more than the law? What makes the opposition presidents feel that they are more than the law? No. We are all below the law. 
That's why I'm saying these people that I've mentioned, all of them, they should not stand vying for number one job in this country because they don't respect the law. How do you expect them to respect the law when they, go, uh, uh, they, they, they are number one? We have seen already that our president, the Republican president, mm. he doesn't respect the law. So we'll take him out. Now what about the others? What sure. about Kalawa? Sure. What about Kamwiri? Mm. What about uh, Montati? Mm. They don't respect the law. They shouldn't as either. Me, I disqualify them. Because I'm also a voter, I'm going to vote. Mm. So I will disqualify them. And I want all these other voters outside them to disqualify them. That's why I started by saying, mm. look at the person that you are quoting. See where he's coming from. Who is he? Is he, has he got integrity? Does he got principles? Is he ready to sacrifice for this country? If they are ready to sacrifice for this country, for the poor, they should pay back that money so that the poor can use it. So they are not ready. And the Minister of Justice has come out you know, very uh, sorry to say he has no money to pay for now. Hence, he's making you, amendments you see, for the, the court. It is a pity. Mm. It is a pity when I look at the way he's dressed mm. and I look at the people that made me cry. All right. When I look at the car he's driving and I look at the people that made me cry. When I look at everything, his office and so on, and the people who made me cry. And then this is the man who says I've got no money. Mm -hmm. He is telling me, and you all Zambians, mm -hmm. that he is not ready to sacrifice for this country. He is telling us that he does not have any integrity. He is telling all Zambians that he doesn't have principles, they can do whatever they want to do, whether it's the court, the law, whatever. This is what these people are telling us. So why do they want to be voted into power? Mm. Again, no, it's wrong. it's wrong. Where are we? I think this will be my final question. Where are we as a country? Because, you know, the country is old. You know, we, 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 we I don't know what I want to say here, but I'm trying to say that we, the country, we've got a lot of debts, mm. all right? And this is the nation. Mm. And even the people, our leaders, that are supposed to pay that money or to raise that money on our behalf again, they are all in this nation. Yes. Who is supposed to preside who here? You see, this is why I always I'm like a broken record. I mm. talk about leadership, mm. and leadership with a vision, a vision over the economy and many other things, mm. but especially a vision with the economy. These guys, they don't even know that actually this country is swimming in wealthy. Right. But that wealth needs to be made into something that we can use. It's right. not the potential. You don't eat the potential. You eat the exploitation of that potential to something that you need. Right. And that's what we're not doing. That's why I'm saying they don't have vision. Mm. Uh, Mr. Piri and all Zambians outside mm. there, I can assure you, I can assure you that this country, given into the leadership of these hands and all my friends, within 10 years, this country will be more than South Africa. This country will be more than Dubai. I can tell you that. Right. This country has more than what the Emirates has. This country has more than what South Africa has. Mm. This country has more than what the UK has, what German has, what even uh, other, other developed countries have. Right. So why? Why are we here where we are? Mm. It's because we are not using the God-given willpower to do the right things in our leadership for our people. That's where the problem is. And if we use that willpower and provide the proper leadership with the vision, integrity, principles, and the, the willpower to sacrifice, this country is going to be something else. I can, believe, I can right. tell you that more than 80, 90% of Zambians will have the cream of their life. Mr. President, we have to go. Thank you so much for coming. I know that um, you've got a busy schedule tomorrow. Uh, from there, you, you are planning to go back to Eastern Province. But all I can say is uh, wishing you all the best in your political career. And, uh, of course, we continue praying for you so that all those ideas you have should be able to materialize one day. We have a rally tomorrow in Matero. Right. Uh, come uh, there and we will tell you, we want to, to discuss with you. We want right. to, to tell you mm -hmm. what we think and how we are going to transform Zambia. Mm -hmm. 
Zambia is for Zambians and only Zambians who develop this country. Let's have a, uh, let's meet tomorrow mm. uh, around 14 hours and uh, we will tell each other, we will inform each other how good this country will be. Thank you so much. We'll discuss again there after the rally, I believe. Thank you. The viewers, we end our discussion here. My guest has been NAREP President Stephen Nirenda and of course uh, who is 2021 presidential aspirant. Thank you so much. On behalf of my camera person, Christopher, thank you so much for that fantastic work and also the upstairs hard-working team as usual. May God bless you. Together, may God bless Zambia. May God bless Africa. Good night. Thank you. Thank you.